But you come here looking for a blessing. Yes. Amen. And you're going to get one. Amen. Amen. I promise you. And a lesson. <laughs> blessing. A blessing always comes with a lesson. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll lose the blessing. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. First of all, Lord, Lord, King of Kings, we subside will let that will be done. We thank you for this time, this opportunity, this moment, Father. There will never be one like it. Let us appreciate it. You brought us all here safely, Father. We all have a sound mind, restrained, alert for the practice of prayer. Amen. We all have warmth and shelter and physical health, Father, and people to love and your presence and your spirit and your promises and your word living in us, Father. Your blessing after blessing, Father. We can see, we can walk, we can talk, Father. Father, we thank you for the grace upon grace that you show us through Jesus Christ, Father, and the best is yet to come, Father. So we call you forth to prepare our hearts right now and our minds right now to receive your word. Open our eyes to see and keep on seeing, our ears to hear and keep on hearing, our hearts to feel and comprehend and keep on comprehending, Father. We thank you, Father, for your grace right now in Jesus Christ, and we invite you to invade us, to fill us with the Spirit, lead us with the Spirit, Father, and let the rest be details, Father. To you be the honor and glory in Jesus' name we say. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay. Does everyone have their blessing path in front of them? Our lesson. Amen. <laughs> Our lesson. Amen. <laughs> Let's see you play there a lot today. I like it. You know, God, you need to understand something about God. God is a God of blessing, which means he's a God of giving. And he doesn't give because you deserve it. You know he doesn't give that because you deserve it, because the Bible says that when we were still sinners, when we were enemies of God, he gave us his greatest gift. He gave us his son. So when we were enemies and he gave us the greatest gift, now that we are the friends of God, the, in the family of God, what won't he give us? God is always looking to bless us. He's always looking to multiply us. He's the God that multiplies 30, 60, 100, 1,000 times as much. He always wants things to be fruitful, bountiful. He promised you life and life to the full. When the fig tree wasn't bearing, Christ cursed it. God wants everything fruitful and to multiply. But he, it won't happen until, unless he what? Blesses it. Yeah. That's why he blessed Adam and Eve and said, now go forth and be fruitful and multiply. If he blesses it, it's fruitful. If he blesses it, even if you screw up, somehow it works out in your favor. If the blessing of the Lord is on you, it's almost like you can do no wrong. Yeah. All things work out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Amen. We must protect the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says God longs to bless us, but he does have some rules and conditions for that blessing because he's a generous God, but he's also a righteous God, which means he has a right way of doing everything. Amen. And we want to prepare to receive a blessing. Every year God gives us a blessing at New Year's. Amen. Amen. You could be at a bar, you could be at a party right now, but you're in the house of God, and I'm trusting Him to bless us. Amen. 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 At a certain point in your life, you realize you <coughs> have to have a blessing. We all have faith, but do we see fruits from our faith? Mm -hmm. We all pray. Do we see anything come from our faith? Mm -hmm. We need... They, they, they were facing 5,000 people. Christ did this miracle twice. Now, when Christ does something twice in the Bible, you got to go, why do you do this twice? Because they needed to understand that you needed God's blessing. Christ fed 5,000 people. Then he fed 4,000 people. And each time he did it, he asked them the same thing. He says, how are you going to feed them? And even on the second time, they go, I don't know. There's not enough food. But with a few loaves and fish, because Christ offered it up to God and asked for his blessing, what happened? Multiply. Super multiply. Okay. <laughs> you know, you have to have a reason to want that blessing. Because when God blesses you, it's overflowing. My cup overfloweth. You know, you have to really want to help a lot of people. You can't handle God's blessing on your own. It is always designed for you and everyone up around you. Mm -hmm. Amen? At a certain point, you realize, man, I just got too many people to give to. 
I didn't have enough to give this. I wanted to give more. I couldn't. I gave right to the last penny, right to the last iota of strength I had. But I still felt I didn't give what? Enough. I still needed God's what? Blessing. Blessing. At a certain point, you're like, Lord, I believe, but I need to see the blessing. If I have the blessing, there will always be enough. You give me everything for life and spirituality. If I don't have the blessing, then I have to rely on my own cunning and cleverness to get my little return. Amen? You need to, you need to establish right away, I need God's blessing. But you need a reason for it. You need a reason, a strong reason. <coughs> You know, I, 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 I love children, and, and I sponsor World, um, World Vision children, and uh, Mazama children, and Dalit Freedom children, and, and these children remind me of Hannah and Samuel, who are precious to me. And, and if Hannah and Samuel can be so loved, and so taken care of, and so sheltered, and so fed, why should these children? Mm -hmm. But to do it, you need resource. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm stretched to the limit. I need more. So I need this night. I don't know about you, but I need this night. I need this night so I can give more. So I can get a harvest. Amen. Amen? Amen. That, that overflows. That's bountiful. Amen? Amen? So let's take a look at this process. We don't have a lot of time, but it'll be short and sweet. So the New Year's Eve blessing, it must end in blessing. The end of it all must be blessing. Amen. Turn to someone and say, I need the blessing. I need I need the, blessing. blessing. the end of it all, the end of it all is a blessing. Is is a blessing. blessing. Proverbs 12, 14. Read this with me, please. From the fruit of his words, a man shall be satisfied, be satisfied with good, and the work of a man's hand shall come back to him as a harvest, as a blessing. <laughs> now, let's break that down for a second. So, man has words. And man has hands. Just like a farmer, he has seed to sow. So, just like a farmer has seed to sow and he gets a harvest, so too man has words and deeds. Right. In other words, words and deeds are your seeds. Mm -hmm. Words and deeds are the things that you plant or give or send off or invest or give up to God, to other people, to yourself, to something, so you get a return. Amen? This is called the seed law. If you want a harvest, if a har farmer wants a harvest, what does he have to do? So, so he has to sow a seed. It's impossible. It's a law. It's cause and effect. If you do not plant seed, you cannot get a harvest. No sowing, no harvest. No seed, no harvest. Now, this is the thing. God has given us all the seeds we need. We all have seeds, but we may not recognize them. L listen to this from Mike Murdoch. Your seed is anything you have received from God that you can sow into someone else. Thoughts are seeds. Love is a seed. Time is a seed. Patience is a seed. Mercy is a seed. Kindness is a seed. Money is a seed. Your prayers are seeds. Thankfulness is a seed. Everything you have is a seed. If it's not working in your life, maybe it's to sow. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, and all these things are expressed through words or deeds. I'm sowing the good word into you. Yeah. The devil always wants to snatch it. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. We need to understand that our words and our deeds are seeds. And they bring back a fruit or a harvest. In other, and this fruit or harvest will either satisfy you, or dissatisfy you. Mm -hmm. There's only two, two reactions to the harvest you get. And the harvest you get is, I'll say it in a, a, a simpler way, it's the results in your life. Yeah. You don't like your marriage. You don't like the way you look. You don't like your, your attitude. You don't like the blessings. You don't like your job. You don't like something. You're dissatisfied. Have you ever thought that maybe I'm sowing the wrong seed? seed? Now here's the thing you need to understand. For you to get a better result, a better harvest, a better thing coming back, you and if you're not happy with it, you gotta sow a different what? Seed. seed. <laughs> you have the power. Yeah. But God has to reveal the seed, and God has to control the seed. <laughs> if he doesn't control the seed, he won't bless the seed. You know why? Because you will abuse it. Man is notorious for being out of control. He's just not developed enough. 
Ever since the fall, we we just we haven't been developed enough. So it's like it's like imagine if I give Hannah a razor blade. Can she control it? No. Imagine I give her the steering wheel. Can she control it? No. Your words are the most powerful thing in the universe. Mm. Your words draw demons or draw angels. Yes. Your words activate God or push God away. Your yes. words oppress your spirit or lift your spirit. Your words depress your feelings or lift your feelings. Your words can bring sickness or healing. Your words in yourself or others yes. bring yes. blessing or curse. Yes. Your words control your belief system. Yes. And anybody knows it's not what you think, it's what you believe. I don't care what you say. Your results are because of what you believe. Because what you believe, you'll speak. And what you speak, you'll sow. And what you sow, you get a return on. Mm -hmm. So unless God starts to control your words, so you speak things into your heart to change your belief system, you won't sow better and you won't reap better. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, yeah. We all want a better harvest. But do you let God control the seeds? Mm. Because we're all, the Bible says the tongue is like a world of restless evil. You know what has gotten me the most trouble in my life? Right here in my own mouth. <laughs> the things I say activate consequences. It brings back a harvest, for good or for bad. You say things, people get mad at you. You say things, you get fired. You say things, people curse. You say things, people feelings are hurt. You say things, you depress yourself. You say things, you feel stupid. I, 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 I don't know if I've ever told you this. I'll never forget one year. This was at Teachers College. I began Teachers College with, you know, I, I was elected as school president. And, you know, we had a, a, a wonderful Christmas dinner. Unfortunately, back in those days, I didn't have much control of myself. And so I drank a little too much. And I said a wrong thing. It haunted me all year. Yeah. At least it was only one year. <laughs> At least it was only one. Well, that was just one thing I said. The thi and the person I said it to, her boyfriend wanted to beat me up. And it was just, it was just, and I didn't even, I, I, I wasn't even conscious of it. It wasn't, wasn't until the next day that th this posse came over to my uh, dwelling place and like, do you remember what you did? I'm like, no, I don't actually. <laughs> but it was too late. I was going to experience the consequences and the animosity and the bitterness all year. I was that one seed brought a harvest all year, and I wasn't in Christ, so I didn't have anything to protect me, other than my own hands, which had already done, and my mouth, which had already brought terrible things. You know, so we were like crazy farmers. We're planting this and planting this and planting this, and we're like, where am I getting this? You know. The, the Bible says, where many words are, sin is not absent. Yeah. If you don't have control of your words, you better speak little. Yeah. Yes. Find a way to be quiet. <laughs> if you can't control, you better not speak much. Because I guarantee you, you're going to not be enjoying the harvest. Yeah. What you sow, you shall reap. You better let God control the sowing. Man is impulsive. Man just does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. <laughs> You know, and then he complains, Lord, I don't like the harvest. And God's like, okay, I'll change it. But can I take control of your tongue? David said, let me put a muzzle <laughs> over my mouth. Amen? Amen? The Bible says a perfect man controls his tongue. Do you know that there's only one, one person in all of history that can control his tongue? Who was it? Jesus. 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 They're, they're crucified. They're doing, he's like silent like a lamb. Didn't curse, not once. And he, and he had every reason to curse. He never said a wrong thing with his tongue. His tongue was tamed. Perfectly tamed. The Bible says man can tame all sorts of wild animals, but he can't tame his own tongue. With it, he blesses man. With it, he curses man. With it, he sows a good seed. With it, he sows it a bad seed. Which one is it? We can't control our tongue. And if our tongue is controlled by our, our mind, can you imagine the fact we can't control our mind either? Hmm. Amen? So, right off the bat, we must establish that if we are going to get blessed all year. See, God always wants to give us a blessing. He just doesn't want us to sabotage it. Yes. 
Amen? How many times have you had a blessing in your life? You had a girlfriend, you had a marriage, you had a car, you had a job, you had a great thing, and then with your own words, your own hands, you destroy it. Yes. Yep. At this point, and when it happens again and again and again in your life, you need to go, Lord, the good I want to do, I can't seem to control myself to do it. This is when God has to bless you with self-control. I'll say it another way, God control. Amen? When he does this, all of a sudden, because all, there's going to be 365 days ahead of you. Imagine all the words and all the deeds that you're going to be doing. Imagine there's no way to control that process. Mm. What are you going to experience all year? Mm. Every year, God says, <coughs> a fresh new beginning. The past is gone. Mm. The future is up ahead of you. Okay, you ready to start again? Okay, before you start, let me control the seeds, please. Mm. I prom God is the greatest investor. God is the ultimate manager, the ultimate coach. He, he will bring out the best out of you. The best out of everything. He is designed to bring forth potential. He loves working with seeds. If you let him control the process, he will bring you 30, 60, 100, 1,000 times the investment. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the ultimate investment banker. Second verse, Proverbs 18, 20 to 21 reads, A man's moral self. Now your moral self is called your conscience. Your conscience is the watchdog over your beliefs. So if I believe, you know, that, that no one loves me or that I, if I believe that, um, you know, like, like everybody hates me and someone gives me something, then my conscience will go, you shouldn't accept that. They don't really mean it. You see, so your conscience is always watching over you to make sure you're true to yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right? So, for example, say I don't believe in relationships, but I get married. Guess what? All through the marriage, I'm feeling guilty and stupid. Mm -hmm. Because I'm doing the very thing I don't believe yeah. in. I'm going against myself. Yeah. So, so, if we're going to control our words, part of it is, is understanding what we believe in and speaking in alignment with it. Because what you believe and confess, that's the harvest you get. Amen? We don't want to, we, we want to know our belief system and we don't want to go against our belief system. Right? So if I don't believe in eating and I eat, the Bible says, that you stand condemned. You're going against yourself. You don't even know yourself. Mm -hmm. If I don't believe in eating curry and I eat curry, then, then I will feel stupid. Mm -hmm. I, I believe in obeying God. So when I do stupid things, I always feel stupid because my conscience, which is typically enlightened by the Holy Spirit, will go, what did you do? And then the blood will have to clean you. So it goes, A man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth. So again, th there's this thing that, that comes back to you. This is the only thing you can eat. Yes. Amen? We all need to eat. What are we eating? Mm -hmm. And with the consequence of his words. So words bring consequences. Words can alter your belief system. You know, the things I say to Hannah can shape her and alter her destiny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know you know why you're living the life you're living right now? Because someone sowed words into you. Yeah. Your parents, your culture, your community. And this is what you're living out. And this is typically what you're trying to get rid of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, are, you are handcuffed by your belief. So the first thing you got to make sure is, okay, what do I believe? Let me not speak against it. Let me not make torture myself. Create internal conflict. Let me be true to myself. Okay. Done. I'm at peace with myself. Now, number two, is my belief system effective for getting me blessed? Because if it's not, then I need to change it. You see, I need to believe God's blessing. I need to believe God's word. So the first thing I gotta make sure is I'm not fighting myself. Second thing is I gotta make sure that belief system is proper in alignment with God's word. Because God is the ultimate what? Blesser. Mm -hmm. He's the king of He owns it all. And He wants to give it, He has given it all. You are his son and daughter. And, and, and the Bible says, all that is mine is what? Yours. Because Jesus lives in you, now you're a son as well. Now you're a daughter as well. So, and, and the king and the father goes, well, here's your inheritance. The question is, can you manage it? If you can't manage your mouth, you'll be destroying the blessing. If you can't manage your hands, you will be destroying the blessing. So we have to keep it in trust. Yes. 
A man's more so shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth, and with the consequence of his words, he must be satisfied whether good or evil. So you can bring good or evil. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So there is a power in the tongue. There, it, words are pure power. You, I don't just give a loaded gun to anybody. We, we, we just throw our words around and you know, yeah. like, like, yeah, no problem. No, when, when you have reverence for this process, this is, this is when you're like, shh. Mm. You, you want to be quiet. You approach every situation like, it's better to listen before I speak. <laughs> to this day, I still get in trouble with my tongue. I'll say one thing to my mom, never hear the end of it. <laughs> one thing to my brother, never hear the end. One thing to a customer down in the store, never hear the end of it. And like deep inside me, I felt the problems. Like, what, why, why are you saying that? Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't. <laughs> Too late. Too late. I activated it. <laughs> now you better hide yourself in the blood. It goes. And they who <laughs> indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it. So if you indulge in it, you better have control. And you better have foresight. Mm -hmm. Man is impulsive. He, doesn't, he can't control it, especially under pressure. We all act nice. We all say nice things. And we all do nice. We all sow good seeds when things are well. But can you handle the times of trouble? And there's always going to be times of trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's nice. But then when they lose their power for four days, <laughs> all of a sudden the mean Twitter people come out. <laughs> All the haters come up. So he's going, Try to hide your socks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All, all the bad seeds come, and then they wonder why a bad harvest will come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen? Yes. And so it goes on. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or for life. So God is the one who can see, and God is the one who has perfect control. It was proved through Jesus. He even forgave you on the cross. He had perfect control of his tongue and his heart. And God is the only one because he's omniscient, which means all-knowing, he can see the harvest. Mm. We, you know, I, th there's, there's people called investors, and they, and they make an educated guess. They're like, well, if I invest money here, I'll probably get this return. Mm -hmm. But they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. they, they have, it's, like very, it's like, well, I got a 60% track record. It's always a percentage. It's always a variable. It's always a likelihood. Like a yeah. God's like, no, no, no. There's no gambling with God. Because he can already what? See it. Yeah. You see? Prophets, you know what prophets can do? Prophets have three-dimensional vision. You ever ever go to movies like, like uh, tomorrow or the, the day after that, I'm going to go see um, The Hobbit, the, uh, the Desolation of Smog with my godchildren. They want to see... 3D, even though I don't like 3D, it gives me a head. <laughs> Anyways, well, th those 3D glasses are representative of how prophets see. Prophets see past, present, and future. They see where you are, were, where you are now, and where you need to go. And they see through God's eyes, because God sees 3D. And God never sees wrong. He knows exactly where you come from, where you are now, and where you need to go. And prophets are like traffic cops. They're like, turn left here. You turn left there, I promise you, that's where the blessing is. That's where the land of Canaan is. That's where the land of promise is. Amen? So, we want to understand that if we do not get God to control our mouth, our words, and our tongue, because He's the one who sees, He's the one who has perfect control, we will plant wrong seeds, we will have wrong fruit, wrong consequences, and we don't want to take a chance with death or life, good or evil, blessing or curse, heaven or hell satisfaction or depression. Mm. I want to guarantee my blessing. Mm. Amen? Mm. Who invests if they don't, if there's a, even a high likelihood of what? Fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Amen? We have to be thoroughly convinced. Amen? <coughs> That's why God says, with blessing, I will bless you. Mm. My word does not leave my mouth and return to me empty. I will bless you. I will get you the blessing. This is God's ironclad guarantee. No one could vouch for God because no one was stable enough to do it. So God had to swear by himself. He goes, I swear by myself that I will bless, with blessing, I will bless you. Because sometimes when you're working with God, it doesn't seem like he's blessing you. It seems like he's killing you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that because part of the blessing is he's got to cultivate you, refine you, develop you. Mm -hmm. 
Otherwise, you can't handle the blessing. The blessing will destroy you. It's like Mike Tyson. The blessing destroyed him. He couldn't handle it. Bit off Evander Holyfield's ear in front of 80, 80 million people. Not a great idea. Kind of, kind of lowers your popularity. Wasn't a good thing to sow. Biting people's ears, or like Peter, cutting people's ears. I don't know about that seed. You, be, you better hold. You better ask God to control that seed. Amen. Peter thought he had perfect control until the soldier came. Peter thought he had perfect control until they threatened his life. <laughs> we all think that the Bible says. Every way of a man seems right to him. <laughs> yeah. Until he's in the fire seven times hotter. Yeah. And then every truck driver saying comes out of his mouth. <laughs> and God says, are you finished? Okay, I forgive you. Now say these words, please. <laughs> so we must understand the power of a seed. Amen? Yeah. David wanted to... Uh, the King Saul at the time said, okay, whoever beats Goliath, they're going to marry my daughter. So that, boom, you're in the royal family. And your household will pay no taxes in Israel. That's like President Harper saying, okay, if you do this for me, you don't ever have to pay taxes, ever, you and your children. <laughs> so, so that means a third of your salary you get to keep. Who wants that blessing? Amen. <laughs> Well, that's what King Saul offered David. And David's like, okay, how can, how can I do that? How can I do that? Well, I can't do that with Saul's armor. But I can do that with this slingshot. His slingshot was the thing he needed to sow. He needed to establish in his life to kill Goliath, get the reward of no taxes, and the king's daughter. Immediately royalty. Amen? There's always something in your life you can sow to get you out of the pits. Amen? It's right there. Part of blessing is, is wisdom. you got to ask God to recognize it. Amen? If you're good at talking, you need to talk. If you're good at giving, you need to give. If you're good at teaching, you need to teach. If you're good at encouraging, you need to encourage. If you're good at administering, you need to administrate. If you're good at praying, you need to pray. Sow your talents. Sow your <coughs> gifts. Hallelujah? Amen. So, that's the first part. Now, if we give control of our words or our tongue or our hands or our actions to God, then he's like, okay, now we're in business. Now we can enter the land of blessing. Third verse, number 6, 22, 27. Now God is going to show you the way to get blessed. If you will give him control, now we'll say, okay, now I want you to do it this way. And the Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron and his sons, this is the way you shall bless the Israelites. So there is a way. Yeah. Say to them, the Lord bless you and watch you, guard and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon and light you and be gracious, kind, merciful, and giving to you. The Lord lift up his approving countenance upon you and give you peace, tranquility of heart and life continually. Now it goes, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. This is very similar to 2 Corinthians 13 when there's a blessing. It says, may you all have the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Those three lords, they correlate to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He goes, the Lord bless you. God so loves you, He always wants to bless you. He gave you the greatest blessing, His Son. He's always watching over it, and He's guarding you. The Bible says, nothing, no one can snatch anything out of the Father's hand. Let Him keep it. Let Him manage it. He's the greatest investor. Mm -hmm. The Lord make His face. So when you see someone's face, they become visible. So Christ is the visible representation of the invisible Father. To shine upon you. Christ came to bring what? The light. He came to enlighten you. He came to show you the process of cause and effect. He came to show you you don't have self-control. He came to be your control. He came to bless you in this process and be gracious to you. He's always trying to give you what? Grace. We don't know enough. We're not strong enough. We're, we're constantly taking advantage of, you know, we just lack so many things, but grace will make up for it. Kind, merciful, and giving to you. The Lord lift up his approving countenance. Now, countenance is expression. So, once God shows you his face, his son, the expression is through the Holy Spirit. It's called the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, etc. Upon you, and give you peace.
tranquility of heart and life continually. When you can't get blessing in your life, when you're sowing wrong and reaping wrong, there is no peace in your life, my friends, in you or around you. The Father has to protect you. The, the Son has to shine and give you grace. And the Holy Spirit has to lift up in you so you have peace, so you have self-control. Amen? Now, now listen to this next part, 27. And they shall put my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. Once you get God's name, now the Father can watch, protect you, bless you. Now the Son can grant you grace and shine and show you what's going on. Now the Holy Spirit can lift and give you peace in the process. When you call God's name, you call all of God. The Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. When you call His name, you putting things in His name, in His authority, or in His ownership. We, we dedicate our children. We put everything in the name of God. Amen. Otherwise, he will not. He goes, put my name, and then I'll bless you. Amen. So, first condition, you got to let him control it, or he will not bless you, because you will sabotage it. We can't control our tongue. We can't control our mind. We can't control our hands. And we can't see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So, there's no way. I, say I have Say I have... Um, $200. I would never give it to a blind man who, who is like, what you, that has Tourette's. I would never do that. He's going to do something crazy. I would never give a gun to someone who can't control them. So I would never give any form of power or blessing or, or responsibility. Never. Right? So, he goes, and they shall put my name upon the Israelites. So once you put, once, once um, you put the name upon it, now God says, I'll bless you. Now this is God's way. This is not up to you. This is He likes it. He likes ownership. He likes to say, this is mine. Or He likes you to call in His authority. So we don't typically enter anything without putting it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I played with Hannah and Samuel, my niece and nephew, uh, last week. And when they came to my place, we had a little Christmas party, immediately I called them together and we prayed in the name. Why? I want His blessing. Amen. I want the Holy Spirit lifted up. I want the Father to protect us. I want the... Uh, Christ to shine upon us and grant us grace. Amen. Amen. I need his blessing because I can't survive without it. I'm not strong enough. I'm not wise enough. I'm not resourceful enough. Amen? Amen? So, let God control the sea. <coughs> Put your name upon it. You're well on your way to blessing. Isaiah 65, 16, 17. So it shall be that he who invokes a blessing on the next step, if he controls it, if you are willing to put his name upon it, call upon his ownership and authority, then all you do is now call it forth. Lord, in the name of Jesus, in your authority, I submit to you. I call forth the blessing. I call forth the favor. I call forth the grace. Then all you have to do is expect it. Amen. It's very simple. We just have faith to believe that God wants to bless us. Amen. And we just have faith to invoke him in his name. And then we expect it. It's not complicated. That's why he says... Now, from now on, he told us, I just want you to ask in my name, and now you'll receive. Because you learned to submit your control to me. Now I just need you to put my name on it. My stamp on it. My legislation. My authority. God likes to know it's his. Amen. That he's in charge. Amen? This guarantees him managing it, him owning it, him protecting it, him looking through the process to make sure that it's yours. Amen? Amen? And that you keep your blessing. It goes, In the land shall so do so by saying, May the God of truth and fidelity, the Amen, bless me. And he who takes an oath in the land shall swear by the God of truth and faithfulness to his promises, the Amen. Because the former troubles are forgotten, because they are hidden from my eyes. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. Hallelujah. God is giving us a brand new beginning. Hallelujah. Every day is a brand new beginning. This year is a brand new beginning. Forget what is behind you. You didn't have control of yourself. Yes. Submit to God. Let Him control you. Put everything in His name. Put everything in His authority. Hallelujah. And keep asking, seeking. Invoke Him. Invoke Him. Amen? Amen? He will lift Himself up to bless you. Last verse. So, if we can put things under his control, if we can give him ownership, put thing, all things in his name, if we can invoke him, 
then all we have to do is posture now for a blessing. Every year, God wants to crown us. Every year, He longs to bless us. But He won't do it unless you put it in His name. He won't do it unless you give up the control. He won't do it unless you invoke Him. You have to call it forth. That's part of your authority. You crown the year with your bounty and goodness, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. The luxuriant pastures in the uncultivated country drip with moisture, and the hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered with grain. They shout for joy and sing together. The whole universe rejoices when the sons and daughters of God are cultivated, are trained, are developed. Amen? They have the Holy Spirit lifting up to give them control. They understand to put everything in His name. They are ceaselessly invoking Him, not depending upon themselves. Amen? You know, if you look at the state of the world, this tells me that the world does not know how to get a blessing. God is interested when it comes down to it in giving us a blessing and in us keeping the blessing. And He doesn't trust us to do it. <laughs> That's why He says, put it in my name. Make sure I control it, and I want you conscious of it, calling it forth. Amen. He, I'll tell you, the Father doesn't trust us. He trusts Himself. That's why He put His Son in you. Amen? Our job is to be cultivated, refined, developed, till we know this backwards and forwards. Amen. This is a year that God so wants to bless us. We have to have faith to receive it. This is a year that we have to have harvest, big harvest, because we want to expand. Mm. But if we do not submit to the cultivation, it's not going to happen. The cultivation is never the fun part. Mm -hmm. The cultivation is a lifelong process. Yeah. There's not bad people, they're just untrained, unrefined, undeveloped. Mm -hmm. But if you will submit to the discipline of a disciple through the Holy Spirit, He will bring out the character and the natures and the ability and the willingness and the faith and all the good things that you need to receive a blessing and keep a blessing and get out of the way of all his blessings. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless us this year. We're going to go into the new year praying. Lord, we thank you for the crowning our year with bounty and goodness. May the tracks of your chariot wheels drip fatness into our life. May you give us life and life to the full and especially in all the uncultivated areas of our life in the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that is not cultivated, not developed, not protected, not refined, not lifted up, that is, that is losing, not winning, God says, let my hands, call me in. Let me have control. Let me manage it. Put it in my name. Watch me develop this. Amen? I have watched, and, and, and remember God's greatest blessings are His people. I've had the wonderful privilege of watching the people of God develop. I've watched my sister Nikki develop, and Vanessa develop, and Brianna develop, and Sifu develop, and Chuck develop, and <coughs> Jeng develop, and so many people develop. I, I haven't seen Mike in a while, and I, I don't know that well, though. Well, but, but, you know, I just see the beauty of God, you know, the goodness of God. I see the humility. I, I see the... the, the I see the love, I see the perseverance, I see the endurance, I see all the good things that come out of enduring the training, the cultivation. Amen? We all, not all, a lot of us have faith, a lot of us expect, but we don't like the cultivation, we don't like the training, so we don't sabotage things. Amen? And if we can submit to God and call forth His, His grace to believe, and His grace to receive, and His grace to be cultivated, His grace to do all things in His name, and and His grace for Him to control all the seeds, then we will be blessed. And we need that blessing. We need that blessing. We have so many people we want to help. Mm -hmm. I want to show you the necessity of the blessing, and I wanted to show you the prerequisites. Everything with God comes with prerequisites. That means setting up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let Him control the seed. Put it in His name. Mm -hmm. Invoke Him. Prepare to be cultivated, to not destroy it. And let Him fill you and overflow you 
so that everyone in you and around you is blessed. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, we love you. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray now. Um, into the new year, everything that you want blessed, bless everything in sight. You know, I, I have a list of, of things I'm going to pray for. You know, you have a few minutes if you want to prepare a little list of things. You know, find a little place, a little corner. God says He's going to ride His chair <coughs> over. You know, and spend a little time with your Father, calling for things, invoking. Amen. Put it in His name. Let Him have control. Call forth His blessing. Amen. Thank you.